Welcome everybody, we are on site today at Founder World in San Francisco. Joining me in the studio is Monica Phillips from Spark Plug Labs. She's a motivational speaker and a leadership coach. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So let's start with Spark Plug Labs. Tell me about that. I started my business two years ago after coaching and uh, leading marketing and business development for 18 years. And I woke up one day and I knew there was something more for me and I really wanted to help people every day. Uh, and so I started Spark Plug Labs as a coaching philosophy to uh, help people move from inspiration to action. And I work with a lot of startups and tech founders and I find that so often we are our own hindrance uh, in the way of our success. Right. And so we have these paths and these journeys and we have this saboteur, that voice on the side of our shoulder that says, oh, you said you wanted to do that, but you don't really want to do that. It would be too much work. Right. And I work with people around habits, accountability, challenges, values, articulation, so that everyone can lead a really fulfilling life. Sure. And unapologetically take breaks and reward themselves and enjoy every step of the way. Sure. And sometimes it is hard. So let's start at kind of the 10,000 feet. What is the difference in the philosophy for Spark Plug Labs as opposed to anything else? That you've seen? Yeah, so my philosophy is do something every day that matters, set great habits, yeah. lead a thrilling life, and you will hit your goals. And it's what we do and how we show up that matters. And it is all, always showing up and keeping your focus. So. Uh, I was on a panel with uh, Sammy Inkinen once and he said, don't do 90% of the things that you're doing. And, and I, I love that, I think it is so true. Uh, so much of what we do, we don't need to do. We could be doing the top 2% of it. So a lot of people I work with who are stuck because they're doing too much and they can't get the right things done, we look at what is it they're doing. Let's write down everything you have to do and then take away everything that you could delegate to someone else and delegate it. Right. And then what is your core list? What are the three things that you have to do this week? And honestly, when we have more than three to five things on our list, we get stuck because there's so much we don't know where to begin. So we talked a little bit about habit forming and you have talked a little bit about list making. How does one go about like forming good habits? Yeah. So one of my favorite examples that I um, will give for myself lately is I was bombarded with paperwork and I run my own business and I have to file taxes and I can't even get it to my accountant because it would make no sense to anyone. It was a mess. And actually the biggest limitation was just making a decision. There are so many options that were available. I finally decided on shoeboxed and zero and shoeboxed saves all my receipts and business cards. It syncs with zero, my online bookkeeping tool and I can send that to any accountant and they can make sense of this chaos that I once had. So um, overnight I created a habit. Every time I get a receipt, I'll take a picture of it. I have the shoebox app, I get a receipt, I take a picture of it and it automatically gets saved. It's searchable by location, by amount. I can identify whether it's reimbursable or deductible and I have gotten rid of all of my paper receipts. I also mailed a bunch of them in to Shoebox, which then scans them for you because I had a backlog <laughs> drawer full of receipts. Sure. It was my, my shame corner, So, and that's fun. And it's something like that where it's really easy, and it's not about the success of the habit you want to create. It's about the intention. Sure. So I want to run a marathon. Okay, great. That means tomorrow I'm going to run five miles. Right. So what do I need to do? I need to put on my running clothes. So after I brush my teeth every night, I set my running clothes out on the floor. That's the intention. When you wake up in the morning and you see your gym clothes on the floor, it's a lot easier to run five miles than if you're just waking up, you're rolling out of bed, you're not really sure, maybe not. It's sure. nice and warm and cozy in your bed. It might be cold outside or it might be too hot outside. What is that you're giving yourself? And, and then being okay with not doing it. Maybe you don't do it one morning. Maybe it's Sunday and you have brunch plans and you don't run the five miles. Okay, let it go. Don't beat yourself. Don't, don't run 10 miles the next day, right? Don't make it so hard that you can't do it. Can't catch up. Right. right. But be okay with missing a day. But don't miss two days. Don't miss three days. Don't miss four days. Sure. Then it's not a habit anymore. So something that's really simple, where you set the intention, you know that there's a vision, and you know what the success looks like. All right. So what is your role in this when you engage? Like when, when you know, Spark Plug Labs engages, what do you guys do in that equation? The first thing I do is I look at values. 
And I, I think that's something that sometimes is overlooked where we're coaching around a specific skill. I'm looking at the values of a person and the values of a team and the culture. How do people work together? What do they want to mean? When they wake up in five years, what do they want people to say about themselves? And then what does that mean for me today? Who am I being? Am I being that person or am I being someone else? And if that's what I want and we're working together and my client says one thing and acts another way, I can say, hey, look, you said you wanted this, but that's not what you're giving yourself. And here's where I'm going to challenge you to stretch yourself more. And it could be very specific business growth strategies, market strategy, uh, team building, leadership skills. So I coach around all of those soft skills of what it means to build a great organization. It's also how we show up every day for ourselves. Because if we don't want it for ourselves, it's a lot harder to give that to someone else. Right. So I know that it's probably an old cliche that you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. And I think that's true, really true for startups. You have to really love what you're doing so you can share that passion with everyone who's around you. Right. So, and not to paint with broad strokes, you know, uh, you said you work with both technical and non-technical people, startup people, non-startup people, big companies, small companies. Yeah. Is there any trends you've seen between the technical and non-technical? Are there ways that uh, certain types of people get in their own way? Is there anything like that that you've noticed throughout your career? It's very um, similar across the board, um, not industry specific, but I would say that um, with all of my clients, the um, biggest differentiator I've seen for those who are successful and those who maybe don't get as far in setting those habits and seeing real shift in terms of what they want when they set goals or they have big dreams is um, I, I work with people who have huge dreams. And when you think about coaching an executive who's at a top funded startup, they are doing a lot. Yeah. Uh, what I see that makes the most difference is writing it down. And that's across the board, writing down your goals, writing down your strategies, being really intentional. And it sounds harsh sometimes, but what I look at uh, really um, deeply is relationships. Because we are surrounded by technology. Right. Uh, here I am talking to you know, a channel for Google developers. And at the end of the day, it's about the person sitting across from me who's going to make the difference in that relationship. So do you have the right relationships? Do you, uh, are you connected to people who could introduce you to the right relationships? If not, where do you find those people? And how do you set intentions around getting those people in your life? So, Founder World, what attracts you to an event like this? Oh, I, lo I love everything about this event. I, I love innovation and entrepreneurship. I came this morning to air my radio show live from Founder World. So I got to interview in the same hour, Bill Riker, founder of Garage Technology Ventures, uh, Yvonne Kogel, a NASA astronaut, um, it just uh, so many interesting people, all within an hour. I interviewed ten, yeah. ten people, I think, and uh, Sounds like we got you can the find it on. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah no, it was That's a real, it was cool. a really great interview. You can find it online. Um, uh, it's uh, SparkplugLabs.co, and it's powerful conversations. It's also in the iTunes store. So uh, just fun conversations, and that's what I come for. I come to share my passion in wanting people to succeed. I find that um, in other parts of the country, uh, not everyone wants mutual success. And when you come to Silicon Valley, I find that what makes it still really special is that people here want others to succeed. And so while there's, of course, competition, sure. it's um, I'm going to compete with you and go ahead and make it better. I would love to see that. And it's really, it's fun to be surrounded by people who are trying something new, not because they have the most original idea, but because they want to work hard for something that matters. So obviously your job is a lot around people, relationships, attitudes, behaviors, but is there anything in the world of tech right now that excites you? Is there anything? You know? Well, I just went on a tour of Singularity uh, with my friend Pascal Finette and it was really cool. And I totally loved the um, virtual reality roller coaster. That was <laughs> great. I brought four kids with me, my yes. own included, and they loved it. Um, we, we all, the adults loved it, I loved it. <laughs> so that was cool. I, um, I have a, a former client who um, it runs Re3D, the largest format 3D printer, and is working on printing from recycled plastic bottles. So really making a difference in the larger scope of things. 
I, what, what I'm most excited about here and what I've seen a lot of on this show is um, space exploration. Yep. And just in talking with, I got to talk to an astronaut this morning, and talking with Yvonne Kogel, what is possible in what we're doing here on Earth and what that means for space exploration. It's, um, it's really something I have to put my head around still. It's kind of cool. It's really cool. So, favorite Google technology? Oh, you know, I knew you were going to ask that, and, and it's a tricky one. I, I, well, like we were saying, when technology becomes so seamless that you don't even know how great it is, that's when technology is won. And for me, it's certainly Gmail. Uh, my new favorite, though, because I work on the fly constantly, is Google Sheets, Google Docs. I, uh, Google Docs is great. I use Google Sheets even more. It's, I can share data. I can open it anywhere. So easy to use. I'm sure the Sheets team would love to hear that. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. That's a big <laughs> yeah. win. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining, yes. and thank you guys for joining. We're live on location at Founder World in San Francisco.